Hi everyone, I'm Magali Bardet and I'm presenting here results about the algebraic complexity of the mineral problem for the PQ Crypto 22 conference. And this is a joint work with Manon Bertin. The mineral problem uh, is easy to state. Uh, you take K matrices of size M times N in some finite field and we want to find a non-trivial linear combination of them that has a small rank. This is exactly the code decoding problem for matrix codes in rank metric code-based cryptography. The problem is well known to be NP-complete and is at the core of various attacks on crypto systems in multivariate or in particular uh, rank metric code-based cryptography. We are interested here in the algebraic modeling of the problem. Uh, I write uh, M, the matrix that is a linear combination of the initial matrices with coefficients uh, that are variables, so that the entries of M are linear forms in the variables. The first modeling was given by Kipnis and Shamir in 99. Uh, the idea is to say that the matrix has rank at most r if and only if we can find at least n minus r vectors that are linearly independent in its kernel. Um, if we assume that the last r columns of m are independent, then we can write the basis of the kernel uh, of the kernel with the identity here and have only unknowns uh, here. We obtain a set of m times n minus r equations. The unknowns are the entries of r and the x variables. And the equations are bilinear in x and r. Another approach consists in saying that the matrix has rank at most r if and only if all its minors of size r plus 1 are 0. Uh, note that under the hypothesis that the last r columns of M are independent, it is sufficient to consider minors with uh, the last r columns and one uh, other column in the first column. This modeling has been completely studied by Foger, Safeldin and Spellauer in 2010, and the complexity of solving the system is well understood. However, just generating the equations can, can be an issue as each equation is a polynomial of degree r plus 1 in the x variables. The last modeling has been recently presented as Adiacrypt 20. It is called the support minor modeling. If you take the Kipnis-Shamir equations, it means that uh, each row of M is orthogonal to some code that uh, is generated by this matrix. So each row of M belongs to the dual code of this code, and the dual code is exactly this one. So each row of M belongs to this code, which means that all the minors here, the maximal minors of this matrix, are zero. The equations are uh, also, depending on two sets of variables, the entries of M that depends on X and uh, the entries of this matrix. But now they have degree R in the R uh, entries. Our main result is the relation between the different sets of equations. In fact, the Kipnis Shamir and the support minors equation generate exactly the same ideas and they contain the minors equation. I'm going to detail why this is true. It's immediate to see that the Kipnis-Shamir equation uh, belongs to the SM ideal. It's a simple computation using Laplace expansion along the first row of this minor, and you get this entry for all G and L, so you get all the Kipnis-Shamir equation. For the next proof, I want to prove that all minors equations are included in the Kipnis-Shamir ideal. Uh, so I write 
any matrix with the first part and the n minus r first colon and the second part, the last r colon, I use uh, the colon vectorization of a matrix, which is a vector formed by all colons put one after the other, and some technical relation between <coughs> the colon vectorization uh, Kronecker product and the product of three matrices. The key ingredient is to consider vectors called V sub J, which are vectors formed by minors of uh, some matrix, here, uh, this one. Uh, they are minors uh, of degree R, and they have the property that if I take this vector and multiply by another vector, then I get a larger minor, uh, where I put uh, the entry here and the vector here. Uh, those relations and the, this vector come from a Kramer formula to solve linear system. And now we can show that any uh, minor uh, here you see that I have the last r colons plus one colon before, and, and they are in fact uh, obtained by multiplying uh, those equations that are all the kipnis shamir equation by uh, some vector that is composed of minors of m of degree r. So if I take a combination of the kipnis shamir equation with coefficients that are uh, monomials in x of degree r, then I will get in the vector space the minor equation. Note that uh, here I multiply equation of degree 2 by equation of degree r, so I should get equation of degree r plus 2, but here uh, the equation, the, the part of degree r plus 2 uh, cancels, uh, so I have a degree fall and I only get equation of degree r plus 1. The proof uh, that the SM equations are included in the kipnis shamir ideal follows uh, almost the same ingredient, and we can express uh, any equation in SM as a combination of the KS equation with coefficients that are uh, polynomials in R of degree R. So here uh, the computation is done for uh, subset G in 1 up to n minus R and I get, I need to multiply by equation of degree R and I get uh, this minor and more generally uh, for any subset of 1 up to n, uh, I take uh, d, which is the number of columns in 1 up to n minus r, and can, I can do the same kind of computation, and I get all the SM equation uh, in the case ideal at degree d. Here we have a degree d. And this time I have no degree four in general. So now we can understand a little bit better how a generic Krebner basis algorithm following a normal selection strategy for graded monomial ordering uh, will behave. Uh, so the normal selection strategy consists in taking all the smallest degree uh, S polynomials at the same time. And so if we start with the kipnis shamir equation and multiply by variables in R, at degree R plus 2, we will have degree falls, and the equation produced after the degree falls are uh, the SM equations. And on the other side, if we start with the SM equations, they contain the kipnis shamir equation, so if we multiply by monomials in R, then we will produce again all the SM equations, and of course we have redundant equations, we will have many CZGs, and 
many unnecessary computation. Also, when we multiply by a monomial just in x at degree r plus 2, we will get the minus equation after degree false. So the idea is then to compute with the support minor equation, but to multiply only by the x variable, and we expect a regular behavior up to degree r plus 1, and after that we have other things that will happen. Now we focus on the SM equations. So the equation of degree 1 in x and degree d in the entries of r depending uh, on the minor of r we consider. So we have degree uh, d from 0 to r. And so we can uh, separate all the equations by degree. And one final ingredient that makes the SM modeling interesting from the computational point of view is the fact that we can use the Plucker coordinates for the entries of R. This is a change of coordinates that describes the vector space by the maximal minors of a generating matrix rather than by the generating matrix itself. Here, we can express each minor by Laplace expansion along the first row as a linear combination of monomials that are product of one variable x and one minor of r. So for the set of equations corresponding to the index d, here we have degree d plus 1 and here we have degree d minor. Uh, and so uh, the change of coordinate to the Plucker coordinates is really uh, imitated, easy to do. And uh, now we replace polynomials of degree t plus 2 by just bilinear polynomials in the x variables and the minors of r. Still, we can consider blocks of equation depending uh, on g. And if we try to linearize the system, then we will write uh, the linear system associated to the equation. We write all the equation uh, in rows corresponding to the degree of the equation and the columns correspond to all the possible monomials pairing that are product of x and uh, minor of r. And uh, we see that each equation corresponding to d depend on two set of monomials of degree d plus 1 and d, and the other ones, uh, but the other entries are just zero. The only exception is for the equation corresponding to r, where we have degree false, so we have just one block uh, corresponding to monomials in vr. And now we want to focus on superdetermined instances that are in some sense easy min rank instances. And it seems that the easiest instances are the ones such that we can solve just by linearization at degree 2. Uh, and this is possible for random instances when the number of rows here is larger than the number of columns. So the constraint here is we have more rows than columns. The constraint on the parameters is here. It's uh, almost this one if we forget the minus one here. And it's not exactly the definition in the PQ Crypto 19 paper by Verbal et al, where they define superdetermined min rank instances are instances where uh, we have degree falls here in one block uh, uh, D, where we have more rows here than just monomials corresponding to d plus 1. And in this case, uh, yes, we uh, observe degree false during the computation. And here we see that uh, it will not be enough to solve the system to have just a degree full. And this explains the experimental results and the fact that uh, after a first degree false, the computation may uh, involve after higher degree polynomials. In fact, the first degree fold is not a good measure of complexity. And here we see that 
it's more interesting to consider, in some sense, higher degree polynomial. Here with the precar coordinates, all polynomials here have the same degree, and it's degree 2, but um, uh, using uh, minors, here we have polynomials of degree uh, r plus 1. And uh, it's better to go up to degree r plus 1 to get all possible equations to uh, have a possibility to solve the entire system. And note that uh, we can expect to solve the system uh, if for some block corresponding to a degree d we have more equations than all the possible monomials here. And in that case, it's not necessary to compute uh, a Roche transform for the, for the entire Macaulay matrix. We can just focus on this small part. So, as usual, uh, we have uh, improvements. If we have too many equations, we can puncture the matrices and consider less uh, matrices. And uh, we can also use a hybrid approach combining exhaustive search and some variables and the solving of easier instances with smaller parameters. And note that uh, the exhaustive search uh, on the R unknowns is performed by uh, um, specializing uh, entire columns of R that correspond in the precar coordinate to uh, adding linear equations between the minors. And here we reduce the problem to the solving of an instance with parameters uh, matrices of size m times n minus a and k minus a m uh, matrices. So uh, we decrease both equation and variables but we also decrease the number of matrices that are involved and uh, so the constraint is this one and we see that with a large enough R we will always have this constraint uh, that is true and you can get information in this preprint uh, on how uh, we can reduce to, to this uh, system. To illustrate uh, what I just said, here are some numerical values for 10 matrices of size 10 by 10. And we see that taking all SM equations available at B equal 1 rather than just up to the first degree 4 really improves the solving. And we can reduce uh, the computation to very small matrices, in particular when R increases. Uh, this is the effect of the Plecker coordinates. To conclude this talk, I want to present an application of a Minrank attack in having code-based cryptography, which is quite unusual. The DAGS crypto system was submitted to the first round of the NIST competition. This is a Macaulay scheme with quasi-diadic alternate codes and an extension field of degree 2 and it was completely attacked by Barelli and Couvreur. Um, in fact, I will show you that this attack is in fact a Minrank attack. The idea of the attack is to find a secret code here and a secret vector uh, that are given by this relation where here we have two public uh, matrices depending on the public code. And of course, if we look at this equation, then uh, it reminds you of the Kipnis-Shamir modeling with the kernel matrix and the x values. And if we do some computation, uh, we can write uh, the previous equation exactly as a minimum program. And uh, the matrices involved in this Minron problem are very particular. So the first K matrices are zero everywhere except on one column. Uh, we have a, a next set of matrices that are zero everywhere except on a row. 
and uh, the last matrices are completely random, but there are a few of them. And for the DAX parameters, the linearization work much better than expected. In fact, uh, the colon rank of the Macaulay matrix is much smaller than expected, and we can compute the rank. So uh, we can solve the instances uh, easily than generic instances. And with this study, we know exactly uh, the behavior and it allows to find the best value to puncture the code. Uh, so if we do not puncture the code, then we have many variables and too much equations so that we do unnecessary computation. But if we puncture too much the code, then we have not enough equation to solve by direct linearization and we need to go in higher degree and we increase the complexity. So here are the optimal parameters. This here is the value of the uh, punctured code. And with the optimal parameters, uh, we will reduce to very, very small matrices. Uh, and just solving matrices of this size allows to completely recover the secret key and the computation lasts very few seconds. Of course, this is not uh, a crypto system that uh, will be used, but it's very interesting to see that we can uh, use min rank attacks in Hamming code based cryptography. To conclude, uh, we have now a better understanding of the algebraic system associated to the min rank problem, and we understand better why support miners perform better than Kipnis Shamir or miners modeling. In general, of course, you can find examples where it's not true, but for generic instances, it seems to be true. The use of Plucker coordinates is very important in the process. And I have shown you that it's possible to use min rank attack in Hamming code based crypto. Thank you for listening. And I'm ready to answer your question in the live session.